my life I've been traveling a lot. My mom touched me to go around. A few years ago I was working in Tajikistan and I get to know some people that was crossing from Europe to China or opposite and I thought it was a really interesting idea. That's from one side. And from the other side, last year I was working a lot and I decided that if I had to put that amount of effort for my work, I want to have some free time for myself. So I decided to do this kind of trip. So I hope I will arrive in Mongolia at the end or middle September. In October would be dangerous because Mongolia is pretty high, it's like 2,000 meters high, the country itself. In October I could start feeling snow. I have to be there before uh, October. Yes, I guess three more months. Yeah, I started trip and I plan to start in April, so when Europe started to be warm. First weeks we had some, some rain and it was cold, but not that much. And actually, when it's raining, it's actually good because uh, then you can actually cool down a bit. Well, if it's sunny, it's really, really warm. I think the most problems is going to be from here. When I will cross to Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, it's like 1,000 kilometers of desert with no water points or no villages. And it's going to be really, really hot and it's going to be probably more difficult. Yeah, uh, let me think. I would say, I don't know, less than... 1,000 euros, I don't know, maybe 700 euros. I don't know, the life, the life in the bicycle is actually pretty cheap. Uh, in a day in the bicycle, uh, when, not, when I'm not in a city like here, I maybe spend 7 euros. Normally I have one of the meals in a restaurant that are really cheap in these places, and then I just buy food in supermarkets. But I sleep in my tent, I sleep in the forest, so I have no expenses at all. So I spend mostly money for crossing by boat the Black Sea, these kind of things, but the trip itself is really, really, really cheap. I don't know, the road is something that I have to discover day by day. For me, the road is freedom. I have the freedom with this time to do whatever I want. I have an objective, a target that is reaching uh, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, but I have all the freedom of the world to just not do it, uh, do something else, to change my route. But the road itself is, every time I'm cycling, uh, I want to know what's, what's next, what's in the next curve, what's in the top of the mountain. And when I'm in the top of the mountain, I want to know what's below the, the mountain. It's a continual discovery and see how the things change, how the vegetation change, how the people change, how the car change, the houses change and same time the road for some reason that I don't understand myself since I started it has dragged me it creates a kind of magnet even if I don't need to get to Mongolia uh, there's something that's pushing me to get to Ulaanbaatar uh, but I don't understand myself why but I really every day I want to wake up and I want to continue to make sure that uh, I reach the target I mean, it was a sad news. Uh, he was a brilliant person. Uh, he was in my university once giving talk. I think everybody knew that it was going to happen sooner or later. Stephen Hawking got diagnosed when he was really young, and I think they told him that he was going to die after a few months or a few years. And he made to be alive for a long time and even keep doing what he liked to do. I think is the most. I'm full of respect for for this person for what he did and for he how he lived the life. And also, actually, with a friend of mine, we are writing a kind of a novel for teenagers, and one of the characters was Stephen Hopkins. So we were really surprised and really sad because uh, we are still finishing the book, but anyway. I always listen to Pixies, Moldy Beaches, The Cure, New Order. These are my favorite bands. Actually, I also listen to some uh, Russian audiobooks because in this trip I will go through uh, Bulgaria, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and all these countries speak Russian. It's really important for me to learn the language. So I guess, first of all, I lose weight. <laughs> uh, I also lost a pair of gloves, uh, but not, not much. Maybe I, I lost a little bit of the stress I had from my work but not really much. What I gain actually is more important, I think. I gain more self-respect for me, for the other people, more knowledge about how to travel uh, light, cheap and humble. I gain a lot of uh, knowledge about people that I met on the forest. So I get to know a lot of people from the villages, farmers, and they host me, we share times, 
and that was uh, really enriching. That was more important than things I lost. I don't know what I lost. But so uh, not, not because I'm here in your country, but uh, so far my best country was Azerbaijan. I crossed Europe. I know all these countries, so for me it was no surprise. Let's say Georgia and Azerbaijan were the first countries, but I fell in love with Georgia for the landscapes. So as soon as we crossed the border, we saw these huge uh, mountains in the north that is the border with Russia. Massive wall that is not allowing people to go to, uh, to Russia. Pretty beautiful and really nice mountains. And then in the last 150 kilometers to Baku was desert. So it was really exotic. Some snakes and that was really beautiful. A part of this, the food is excellent. The people is really nice. Uh, as soon as we crossed the border, was a lot of kids telling us, welcome to Azerbaijan, thanks for coming. And we even make jokes thinking that the, the government pay them because all, everybody say the same. Everybody is uh, knocking the horns of the cars to say hello. Sometimes maybe too much. Sometimes we get scared by the trucks when they do that. But yeah, really nice people, really nice landscape and food. So, so far, the best country. Also, Baku is really, really nice uh, city, really modern, and really surprising too. Oh, yeah.